Hey guys, so I have been sitting on a quote this morning, actually a piece of scripture from the Bible that I encountered when I was uh, watching a video this morning. And this particular verse has really stuck with me and has me reflecting on money and abundance and the current C, currency, current C magic around money and the Babylonian money magic system as well. So these are all topics I wanna to dive into in this video. And I wanna start with reading you this quote. So this is Matthew 25, 29, and it says, everyone who uses what they have will get more. They will have much more than they need, but people who do not use what they have will have everything taken from them. I'm gonna read it one more time. Everyone who uses what they have will get more. They will have much more than they need, but people who do not use what they have will have everything taken for them. So to me, this is explaining the concept of money stagnancy and really of stagnant water. You know, what happens to stagnant water? Stagnant water becomes filled with pathogens and disease and sickness and it's because it's not moving there's no life in it right if something is sitting still just like us if we sit still all day if we you know this is the sedentary lifestyle like issue that you know is so prominent in our world today most people are working nine to five jobs some more some multiple jobs where they're sitting all day in front of a computer and not moving the body enough so what happens the body ends up building disease, building stagnancy, building inflammation and issues to try to combat that lack of life force and movement. So money is the same way, right? Money is an energy just like anything else. And it's a reflection of our own self-worth, I think at the end of the day too. And so when money sits stagnant, it rots. It creates disease. It creates, well, actually, <laughs> there's something rotting right there that's pretty cool actually so when something sits it, it festers right and when when money sits like it has been in these corrupt systems you know when money sits in bank accounts that aren't getting used when money sits hoarded you know like a like a dragon sits upon its hoard siphoning that energy from others it breeds that same kind of issue and i liken this you know within the currency current c language and the kind of water energy that's embedded within currency energy itself you know i, I liken it to being like the dams that have been built which some of you guys might have heard me say before you know we've humans have gone and built all these structures all of these dams all of these um you know artificial blockages it's it's like a blood clot almost right where rivers and streams and water should be flowing, humans have put up artificial structures to stop that flow and siphon that energy for themselves in an unnatural way. And that's not to say that dams aren't natural. Obviously, beavers make dams, right? But the way that we've done is an excess. So everything in moderation. And we have done an excess of this. And the same thing goes for the financial system. The financial system is supposed to be a blossoming, blooming ecosystem that is a toroidal field within itself and what's happened is that toroidal field has had dams parasites uh, blockages instilled in it intentionally by those people who carry the most amount of financial power so they can siphon the rest of it for themselves so going back to this quote you know it's talking about this idea that if you don't use what you have if you sit on it, if you hoard it, if you keep it in a stagnant place and it's not circulating, uh, God's going to take it away from you, right? So those that give their money, those that invest in others and themselves and use that money, they are rewarded with more, right? And there's a simple analogy just in financial terms, in terms of like investments, uh, any kind of investment, whether it's crypto, stocks, real estate, you know, if, if you make money and you put that money in your bank account, like most people, we're not taught how to invest it. We're not taught how to multiply it. Um, it's going to 
it's going to sit, <laughs> obviously. Like if you don't put it anywhere, it's not going to multiply. But the same person or a different person who takes the same amount of money and takes a little bit out of their paycheck every month and puts it in an investment, well, over the next few years, they're going to multiply their money, you know? Um, so using that energy is extremely important. And within the context of cryptocurrency and the financial system, I believe this is where fear is keeping people right now. People who are not investing in the new paradigms, who are not investing in the new financial systems, like with cryptocurrency, you are keeping that stagnant, right? If you're putting money in the bank and you're trying to store it there and you're not allowing that money to work for itself and work for you and grow and then allow you know, that to be a channel through you to serve others through that financial abundance, God's going to take that away from you. And that's what this, you know, piece of scripture in the Bible is saying. And so how can we, how can we do this? Well, first we have to have the courage, right? We have to have the courage to do something that's against the norm. We have to do something that is different than what our parents programmed us to do and what society and these 1% have programmed us to do. So that's why for me, cryptocurrency is so important because it is the unraveling of the Babylonian money magic system. And if you haven't heard that term before, Babylonian money magic system, that is basically the idea that in the times of Babylon, this energy, this money energy was perverted and it was used to enslave others instead of to empower others. And all you have to do to see the evidence of that today, you know, I mean, there's a lot of evidence, but one, that all seeing eye pyramid on the dollar, on the back of every dollar bill in print, that is the Babylonian money magic system. Okay. And it is a debt-based system, right? Every dollar represents a piece of debt. It does not represent a piece of value. Every dollar represents money owed to somebody else. It's not backed by gold like it used to be. It's not backed by anything other than the debt that it's worth. And so we need to transition from a Babylonian money magic debt enslavement-based system to a by the people, for the people, decentralized abundance based system and this is what cryptocurrency is and personal anecdote when you shift the energy that you're holding from one system to the other when you shift or else i'll speak for me i'm not going to speak for everyone else but i know i've talked to many others that experience this as well that when you shift <laughs> There's a jet up there. I don't know if you can see it. Fighter jet. So when you shift the system that you're holding your value in, everything in your life reflects that, okay? So literally when I first started investing in crypto and I took all the money I had in the bank and I had the courage and I embodied that full card archetype in tarot and I put myself out there and I just put it all in crypto, right? everything around me started to shift and it was because I was no longer feeding that evil money magic system, that debt enslavement based foundation for the system. And when I put that value into something that was decentralized like XRP or any other cryptocurrency that resonates with you, I noticed everything else in my life started to shift. Uh, my mindset started to shift my magnetic field, my, my abundance field started to become more magnetic and I started to bring in opportunities that were not existent before. So there's literally something that the money magic system does to our electromagnetic field as, as humans where it keeps us in the state of lack. It keeps us in the state of debt. So not only you know, if you're holding just your, your US dollars or whatever it is in the bank, not only is it not growing there, right? Like in the, in the scripture from Matthew that I just read, it's stagnant, but you're also feeding that negative system. 
you are giving into it, whether or not you're intentionally doing that or not, it's what you're doing. And so when you have that wake up call and you go, okay, I'm going to be more intentional with my money and I want to store my value. And really this it begins to break down the, the barriers of money and value. And you go, okay, money isn't what I thought it was. Money is actually any form of value in the world that can be traded, exchanged and given to others. And when you start putting that in a place where it's working for you, it's working for the people around you, you know, it's a decentralized system, everything else starts to shift. So I think this is really powerful. It's a very powerful piece of manifestation magic to actually just move the place where you're holding your value. And I also want to comment on the idea of not owning what you think you own. And what I mean by that is if you have money in the bank, do you really own that? If, if the government or the bank itself can just shut down your account, like we've seen happen with so many people, if they can shut down your account, take your funds and they don't have to give them back to you, right? That's in the fine print that you sign when you sign up for the bank that if they go bankrupt or, you know, for whatever reason, if, if they don't think that you are worth their energy to support, they'll drop you and they'll take all your money. So you don't own <laughs> your money. So when you have money in US dollars and it's sitting in the bank, you have no sovereign claim to that. That's not actually yours, right? And this is the same concept with cryptocurrency on a public exchange. Like if you go and buy crypto on a crypto.com or a Coinbase or an Uphold and you don't move it to a private wallet, well, that's the same exact thing. You're keeping your value in a third party that uh, can just take it at a moment's notice whenever they feel like it. And we've seen this happen time and time again, right? Like I constantly bring up the Canadian trucker rally and how they had everything shut down, right? When they went to go use their voices, when they went to go use their rights, they had everything taken from them that they could take. And the only thing that they could not take from these people was their cryptocurrency on their private wallets, okay? They took everything else. They took their banks, they took their PayPals, they took their Venmos, they took their cash apps, they took their crypto exchanges, the websites where you buy crypto and you, you initially have it. They took all that because that's all centralized and it can all come down to one decision where they decide, hey, well, we don't like what you're saying anymore. So all your money's gone. So this is why crypto is the only place, crypto on a private sovereign wallet is the only place where in the digital realm, you actually own what you own. And you can look at other investments too. If, if you're into stocks or you're into real estate or whatever, you own a house, you own a car. Do you actually own any of these things? If they can come take it from you in any way, in any capacity, do you actually own it? So that's where crypto, it's the only thing they can't take, right? That's why they say your keys, your crypto, not your keys, not your crypto. And your keys are your private passwords that only you have that, uh, you know, as long as you're responsible with it, you're gonna be the only one that has that, right? As long as you're not giving that out, as long as you're not careless, with more power comes more responsibility, just like Uncle Ben said in Spider-Man, right? So I just really, I hope this resonates with you guys because it is so important. And when I sh when I made this small change in my life, you know, before I even started really generating actual profit with my crypto, just that shift of putting it in from the old system, from the Babylonian money magic system into the new by the people, for the people, decentralized money system. There was a quantum energy shift at that moment, which manifested other fortunes and abundance and magnetized more opportunities in my life. So I'm curious if you relate to this, let me know in the comments because I think this is a magic that uh, more people need to understand and internalize. And this, uh, this piece from the Bible really hit me and you know i'm not christian but um wisdom is wisdom so there's a lot of wisdom in the bible it's a very important thing that's going on right now this shift in the financial world and people who demonize money are not going to 
see the same kind of opportunities, right? If you're still living in fear in the traditional system, if you're keeping your money in the bank, you know, I, I of course, you know, you need a bank to some degree to, to uh, be able to pay for things like bills and other things. But for me, I keep minimal operating expenses in the bank, just as literally as, as little as humanly possible, because to me, that's the riskiest place. You know, that's the riskiest place you could keep value. And it's also not good energy. You're feeding that old system. So if you're ready to not feed the old system and you're like, okay, fine, I get it. Finally, you know, I'm going to be walking a group of students through the entire process of cryptocurrency, understanding the space, getting your private wallet set up and then making it work for you and actually generating passive income, which is another thing that was not possible in the same respect in the traditional financial system. You know, they, they cheap us out, you know, while the 1% get all of these different opportunities as accredited investors. And there's so many opportunities available to people with more money that people kept in the dark do not get. And so, you know, they, they give us the drip of the, the one, two, maybe three, 4%, if you're lucky that you'll get in the bank. Well, meanwhile, in crypto, we're making over 25% compounding interest. And that compounding interest is another piece of magic that has traditionally been used against us, right? So most of us know compounding interest from our credit card debt and how that interest is compounding. And, you know, people can spend a lifetime paying off debt and barely make a dent in the actual amount that they owe because they're just paying, you know, this loop. They're just paying the interest off. So compounding interest is now going to start working for us. We're no longer going to be subject to these enslavement systems, but this is a choice you have to make, right? This isn't something that's just going to happen to you. This is a conscious choice that you have to put yourself out there. You have to have the courage to step outside of what you may think is the standard or the norm and move into these new opportunities. So if this calls to you and you want to join me and the other students in the Conscious Crypto Academy, we're going to be starting a new container where we're going to be walking students through the whole process. We're going to be doing weekly live calls. We're going to have a private, we already do have private uh, group with 24 seven support access. And it's a group of conscious like-minded investors. So it's people like you and like me that are called to this space. and. That's something that so many people come to me and they're like, man, I don't have anyone to talk to this stuff about. Like, like some people, you know, get the spiritual stuff and some people get the crypto stuff, but I don't know anyone that really is embodying both. And so that's what our community is. It's a community of spiritual awakening, conscious individuals who have a desire to serve humanity and to serve the earth and to really do good for, you know, each other and the changes that we're going through. And that's one of our big goals is that we are creating this network of people that are going to be millionaires, billionaires, maybe even trillionaires, because we're moving, we're moving into new paradigms. And we're going to have, we already do this network of international awakened beings who are going to make some serious impacts and changes. And so if this calls to you and you know that that is for you, click the link below. You can read more about how to join the academy and I would really love to see you there and I want you to really have that courage because foresight is one thing intuition is one thing that's the feminine but you also need to have the masculine you need to take action you need to have courage and actually do and uh, you know a lot of people are polarized hyper feminine hyper masculine to the point where it becomes toxic um, but within all of us there exists both and so we need to have that marriage of those energies, the feminine, the calling, the intuition, the listening to God, and then the masculine action to actually take the steps that God is showing us to take and the opportunities that he's giving us. We need to actually go out and uh, take some action in order to you know, be in alignment with that. So hopefully you guys found some value in this. Hopefully you enjoyed the beautiful scenery out here in the Sonoran Desert with all of our saguaro cactuses. And uh, let me know what other kinds of videos you guys want me to make and what you want me to talk about. I'm trying to make uh, at least one video a month here. Some of these days 
I've actually gotten two videos out, but my goal for February is to do at least one video a month because I've never challenged, or sorry, one video a day, <laughs> not, not a month. That, that was my old schedule, one video a month. But I'm challenging myself to do one video a day. You know, this is, this is that action on my part where I'm like, okay, it's hard, right? It's hard to make content. If you guys know, if you've ever made videos or recorded yourself, especially when you're getting into the flow of it, it can be very difficult um, to continuously put yourself out there and have the energy and ideas. So I'm challenging myself to do that this month, <laughs> even though it's hard. And each day it's getting a little easier. I'm finding a better flow. And uh, I really like coming out to the desert here in the middle of nowhere and, uh, you know, grounding in with nature. It's, it's a lot better for my mind and my field than sitting in a, in a dark office in a square room where the ideas just feel stuck. But out here they feel flowing and ambient and expressive. So, yeah, let me know what you guys want me to talk about this month in my videos. And I uh, would love to see you in the Conscious Crypto Academy if you're resonating with this message and you want to make an impact and help create the new earth with us. So thank you guys for watching. Much love and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.